Samson coming, coming live from us from a volcano because they're called volcano bonds to a certain extent because it's going to be financing this Bitcoin city that's on and just in the uh, surrounding this area of a volcano. And I'm, uh, I'm wondering why any institutional bond investor would buy this. Well, why wouldn't they? Because uh, it's got a six and a half percent yield and your yield on your current bonds of El Salvador that come due in 10 years is 13 percent. Yes, but this bond has a Bitcoin component and that is why it is called a Bitcoin bond. So when El Salvador is raising one billion dollars in this first bond issuance, 500 million will be used to acquire Bitcoin and then 500 million will go towards energy and mining infrastructure. So there is this war chest of Bitcoin backing this bond. And that dividend or that coupon actually increases after the fifth year. So for the first five years, it will be a 6.5% coupon. But then it accelerates to what uh, I call a Bitcoin dividend or a special dividend that is basically the Bitcoin being sold off, the $500 million worth of Bitcoin being sold off gradually quarter by quarter. Yeah. So the El Salvador government will share that with the bondholders. Why wouldn't, if a institutional bond investor was allowed to buy into this, so had the ability within the rules of the fund they invest to have exposure to crypto, why wouldn't they just buy Bitcoin straight up rather than have a 50% take? Well, they could buy Bitcoin straight up, but usually the mandates or charters don't allow them to hold cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But they'd be so, allowed to hold these bonds, you think, in the mandates? Why not? It's just a bond. But it's not just a bond because it's related to Bitcoin. And as you say, 50% of it over a five year time frame, if indeed you manage to pay that back, would be able to be given based upon Bitcoin now. So do you think those mandates would allow them to buy in? Well, that's really for them to figure out. But we're trying to structure this in a way that they can present it to I don't know, their boards, their directors as a normal bond, because it is a normal bond that just happens to have a large chunk of Bitcoin behind it. But even if they don't buy it, I don't really see a problem. There is okay. uh, Bitcoin's market cap is one over a trillion dollars. There's about one hundred and forty five billion dollars worth of stable coins. And this is just from you know, the Bitcoin industry, uh, traders, whales. And this money will just pour in. I was in Turkey talking to uh, my friend, the CEO of BTC Turk, Oscar, and I told him about this plan. I told him I'm going to El Salvador next, and I told him about the bonds. And you know, in two seconds, he said, I'm in for a million dollars. And then I said, are you sure you don't want to think about it? Do you want to see the specs? Do you want to read more? And he said, no, this is for the people of El Salvador. So the money will come in. There's another whale that I talked to just before coming on your show. And he said, I'll take 20 million of it. So but Samson, is it not wrong to think that people shouldn't do their due diligence first? Yeah, they should do their due diligence. But there is an important part here, which is helping El Salvador and fixing the money supply. And I think that's more important than the exact specifications on a bond. So you think even without institutional bond investors, if they are perhaps driven away by the fact that the yield is so low relative to existing bonds or indeed they can't have exposure to Bitcoin, do you think it will be who will be the actual investor? It will be more crypto focused enthusiasts and, and they'll be good for one billion? I think there's more money than a billion that's going to flood into this bond. Mm -hmm. um, the institutional investors, they can come in, like they can do their due diligence. 6.5% is in line with most bonds around the world. And there is that special Bitcoin dividend. So they can run the calculations. Like if uh, at the end of 10 years, Bitcoin is a uh, million dollars, we've done a calculation where Bitcoin's appreciating 35% year over year, then the yield that year will be about 90% plus the 6.5% coupon. But if it goes higher, we had another conservative model which put it, which put it at 140% APY mm. plus the 6.5% coupon, then you know, it's a pretty attractive bond by any measure. Definitely versus bonds versus crypto, which, I mean, Bitcoin is up on an annualized basis 240%. So you might be therefore losing out to the opportunity cost of just getting into Bitcoin related exposure rather than going into this bond. But Samson, I'm interested that you're, you're in Turkey, you're in El Salvador. Are there other countries, other areas, municipalities looking at this with, dare I say it, perhaps political, uh, political risks that some just don't always willingly swallow? Well, there's risk in everything. Even buying Bitcoin comes with risk. And it's really just up to people to make their own decisions and 
take their own analysis on it, you know, D-Y-O-R. Um, uh, I think there's a lot of interest. We've already had some institutional investors reach out to, to Blockstream, and they're very, very interested in this offering. And I guess that means that you know, their mandate would allow them to buy this bond. You talk about the accelerate hyper-Bitcoinization and bring a new financial system built on top of Bitcoin. Can you just dissect what that means? Well, hyper-Bitcoinization just means you don't need to go back to fiat currencies. You can just uh, buy Bitcoin and stay in Bitcoin and spend Bitcoin. And El Salvador is a key part of that, right? Bitcoin is legal tender here, so you can you know, buy Pagusa with a Lightning Network and you can just spend Bitcoin freely. And you know, Bitcoin City is going to be a very attractive place, I believe, for a lot of uh, Bitcoiners. Meanwhile, though, of course, relations with the U.S., and El Salvador, from a government perspective, seem to be unraveling. They're heading yet a further low at the moment. There are, of course, worries of relationships between El Salvador and the IMF. Does any of that matter to some of the investors that you're talking to? No. <laughs> I don't think uh, a lot of these organizations like the IMF or World Bank are really relevant in the world based on, on Bitcoin. They're only relevant because they can print money. They can make the SDR, you know, they can make money out of thin air. You can't do that on a Bitcoin standard. It really takes us back to, you know, where what money should be, which is just money, not a surveillance mechanism and not a tool to, you know, enforce your, your beliefs and uh, economic policies on another nation. 